My name is Dan Kweiman or Kenjo, and I welcome you to Kentech 9016, a YouTube channel to educate you on renewable energy and the relevance of power system. Please, if you are new to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe. For today's lesson, we are going to basically talk about what we call Norton's theorem. This theorem is a powerful theorem used in circuit analysis. So anytime you want to simplify circuits, there are various theorems that we can use. And for today, we are going to basically talk about Norton's theorem. Norton's theorem states that any linear circuit connected between two terminals can be replaced with Norton's current, and it is being represented as IN. In parallel with Norton's resistance, connected between the same two terminals. So anytime we have a circuit, and Norton is saying that for us to simplify this circuit, we can represent it with what we call Norton's current, in parallel with what we call Norton's resistance. Now this IN is, this IN is representing Norton's current, and it is the current that flows through the short circuit, and it's the current that flows through the short circuit path. And the Rn is the Norton's equivalent resistance, which is the resistance seen between the two terminals. So this circuit diagram represents Norton's equivalent circuit. So this is Norton's equivalent circuit. Now the load resistor is being connected in power with the Norton resistance. So if I want to calculate the current which is flowing through the load resistor, remember, the load resistor is connected in parallel with the Norton equivalent resistance. And this IN, which is the Norton's current, is the total current supplying these loops. So when this current gets to this junction, it will split. So for us to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor, we can simply use what we call the current divider rule. And in using the current divider rule, our current, which is flowing through the load resistor, let's say I. RL. So the current flowing through the load resistor I RL will be equal to Rn over Rn plus RL times In. So in solving Norton's theorem, there are various steps or procedures that we need to undertake or follow. And these are the steps that we need to take to solve circuits whenever we are asked to use Norton's steering. One, the first thing we are supposed to do is to remove the load resistor and mark the terminal. So wherever, whenever the question is find the current flowing through a particular resistor, that resistor becomes your load resistor. All you are supposed to do is remove that resistor and mark the terminal. Then you find a short circuit current using Kirchhoff voltage law. So when you mark the terminals, you represent it as a short circuit. Then you find the current which is flowing through that short circuit part. Then, thirdly, we are supposed to deactivate all the independent sources and find Rn. And here, Rn is the Norton's equivalent resistance. Then we are supposed to produce the Norton's equivalent circuit with the load resistor connected in power with the Norton's resistance. So here, this is the Norton's equivalent resistance, which is being connected in parallel with the load resistor. Then lastly, we are supposed to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor by using this formula. So we can use this formula to calculate the current, which is flowing through the load resistor. So let's use Norton's theorem to simplify this circuit. And the question is, find the current flowing through the R6 resistor using Norton's theorem. So we are supposed to find the current flowing through this R6. And the value of the resistance here is 10 ohm resistor. So we are supposed to use the Norton's current to calculate the current which is flowing through this 10 ohm resistor. So in solving this problem, we need to follow the steps. And first, we are supposed to remove the load resistor and mark the terminals. So this is our load resistor. We are going to remove this load resistor. Any time you want to use Norton's theory, you remove the load resistor. So, and mark the terminals A and B. Then, once we are done with this step, then the next one is find the short circuit current using Kirchhoff voltage law. So we are supposed to find the short circuit current, which is the current flowing through the terminal A and B. 
using catch of voltage law. So from here, to calculate the current flowing through this part, we realize that R4 and R5 are connected in series. So R4 and R5 are connected in series. So their total resistance will be equal to 4 plus 6, which is equal to 10 ohm. Then this 10 ohm will be in parallel with this 10 ohm. So R3 in parallel with 10 ohm resistor. And you resolving this, the value of R3 is 10. So we are going to have 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10, all raised to the power 1. And this is going to give us 5 ohms. Now, once we've been able to simplify this portion, it means that the, the resistor here will be in series with R1 and R2. So here, R1 is in series with R2, in series with the 5 ohm resistor. R1, R2 are all having a resistance of 5. So 5 plus 5 plus 5, giving us 15 ohm. So what it means is that the total resistance, RT, is given as 15 ohms. But from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So if I want to calculate the current, I will, I will be equal to V over R. And the voltage source here is 45. So 45 over 15, giving us 3 amps. So what it means is that this voltage source will drive a current of 3 amps. So this 3 amps will flow through resistor R1. And when it gets to this junction, it will split because from Kirchhoff's current law, current entering a junction should be equal to current leaving the junction. So the current here will split. So to calculate the current which is going to flow through the short circuited part, we can still use what we call the current divider rule to find the current flowing through A and B. So using current divider rule. to calculate the current flowing through the terminal A and B, which is the IN. IN will be equal to 10 over 10 plus 10, multiplying by the source current, which is 3 amps. And IN here is going to be 1.5. So what it means is that the current flowing through the short circuited part is 1.5 amp. Then you are supposed to deactivate all the independent sources and find Rn. So here, the independent source in this question is just one, the voltage source. So we are going to deactivate it. And anytime you want to deactivate a voltage source, you represent it with a short circuit. So once it is being represented as a short circuit, we realize that calculating our Rn, give an Rn value of 15 ohm. Then the last but one, we are supposed to produce northern equivalent circuit with the load resistor. So this is northern. So this is our Rn. And the value is 1.5. In parallel, So this is going to be our RL, and the value is 10 ohm. And this is our RN, and the calculated value is 15 ohm. So for us to calculate the current, which is flowing through the load resistor, we can still use what we call the current divider rule. So current, which is IRL, flowing through the load resistor will be equal to Rn over Rn plus Rl times In. And our I Rl will be equal to 10 over 10 plus 
15 times 1.5, which is equal to 0 0.9 amps. So here, the current flowing through the R6 resistor, which is the 10, 10 ohm resistor, is 0 0.9 amps. Okay, so let's look at some of the advantages and applications of Norton's theorem. So the first one is the advantage. It reduces the complexity of networks. So if you have a network of several resistors connected in either series or power together with a current source or a voltage source, Norton theorem can help us to reduce the complexity of that circuit to a simple circuit. Then application, applications of Norton's theorem. Norton's theorem helps to accomplish a maximum transfer of power. So anytime you want to transfer maximum power, you can apply Norton's theorem to do so. Then replacement of a large part of a network to a simple circuit. So anytime you want to replace a large network with just a simple circuit, you can also use what we call the Norton's theorem. Thank you for watching Kentech 96 TV.